This is Andy from HowEFIWorks.com and today I want to talk about how to set up an AFR target table and closed loop AFR control to begin the tuning process on an MS family of ECUs. Most other ECUs use a similar setup but this one is being demonstrated on an MS3 Pro or MS3 Ultimate. This is the basic fuel equation that we use for almost any ECU. In the case of this ECU, what we have is an AFR target table in red and a short-term O2 sensor correction in green. These are the two pieces of the fuel equation we're going to be talking about today. The red one is possible to turn on and off or at least to turn to one, meaning ignore this in the fuel equation, but nonetheless you still have the O2 sensor correction referencing this table. The first thing we want to do is go to Tools, Calibrate AFR Table, and what will pop up is this screen. You can choose your wideband and hit Right to Controller. That will set the limits for your particular wideband controller as how it communicates with the ECU. One thing to take note of is widebands, all widebands, are really using Lambda internally. What they're doing is smelling for oxygen in the exhaust system and basically referencing that back to if there is zero oxygen or just barely any oxygen, what you must be is very close to a lambda of one. If it sees quite a bit of oxygen, what it will do is consider that lean. Is when working with gasoline, AFR is equal to lambda times 14.7 or you can think of it as lambda is equal to AFR divided by 14.7 or bottom line is 1 lambda is equal to 14.7. This ratio only works with gasoline. So now this is an AFR table that is set up for gasoline. At the bottom we have RPM that's typical. Up the left side we have MAP or manifold absolute pressure running from nearly a total vacuum of 20 kPa. Zero would be a total vacuum, but we never get there. But from 20 kPa up to about 250 kPa. Keep in mind that 100 kPa is atmospheric pressure, and this row would be the maximum allowable on any normally aspirated motor. 20 would be in a huge downshift, and 200 kPa happens to be about 15 psi of boost. What I've done is set the entire low power area of the map to 14.0. Virtually any motor will run just fine at 14.0, provided that you're not running a catalytic converter. 13 is considered the normal safe AFR at 100 kPa in the intake. As you get to higher and higher boost, you want to set it to more like 11 if you get over 15 PSI of boost. You start getting into the 20, 30, 40 PSI. I'd advise taking it to an experienced tuner with a dyno. Things can get very expensive when things go wrong. The next table is the general settings table. And what I want to do on this tab is go to incorporate AFR target, set that to include AFR target, and your metric as 14.7 for gasoline. That number would be different if you're running something other than gasoline again. Now we go to the AFR EGO control tab. The two boxes that we're primarily concerned with are in red. The first one you set up is the EGO sensor type as wideband and number of sensors is one. And then EGO one port, what that basically is, is what pin is your single wideband coming in on. If you happen to be a V8, you'd end up with two sensors and two EGO ports set up. On the left side, what we're doing is setting to PID, use ignition events, and this number for a four cylinder would be about 10 and about 20 for a V8. I do want to set use authority table to on. These numbers, what they are is how wide of a range do you really trust your wideband? My wideband in particular maxes out at 10 to 18. So I basically trust it from 10.5 to 17.5. I want to be active above 165 degree water temperature or anytime I'm below 100% TPS. You might set that down to 50 or so once your motor is tuned, but to start, 
the tuning process, let's go ahead and do the whole range watching the wide bands. Down at the bottom of the EGO uh, delay after start, it might be 10 to 30, depending on how long it takes your wide band to come up. And then at the very bottom of the PID settings, start with the default settings. Once you've got use authority table picked, then what you get is the ability to get to this table. Notice that all numbers are actually in percent, plus or minus percent. So we give the white band and the closed loop 10% authority to correct. Keep in mind that 8%, 7.5 or so, is about 1 AFR. So we'll allow the white bands and the O2 correction to work with us for about 1 AFR. At high power, I only give it about 5% authority, just in case something goes wrong. Um, you probably don't want to give it some really big authority when you harden the power. Your area that you idle at should be around this area. I give it 10% at idle. So let's talk a little bit of how this works. On the left, I've got the AFR target table. Again, RPM at the bottom, map up the left. The dot is where your particular motor might be running at the time. In the middle is the criteria, and on the right side is the authority. So basically what it does is, let's say we're sitting at 75 kPa and 2500 RPM. What it'll look for is an AFR target between 14.0 and 13.7. Call it 13.85. Checks to make sure that all the criteria is met in the green box. If it is met, then what it'll do is run through your the red boxes, the PID correction, and depending on how far off this number is compared to what we're finding in the exhaust system and how fast it's getting the correct answer, the mathematics of the PID will automatically come up with a correction. Provided that the correction is less than the authority you've granted, again, we're at 75 kPa and about 2500 RPM, it would allow about a little over 9% correction so it will limit these corrections out to a maximum of 9%. So for example, if you're getting a 15 AFR actual, here it's about 8% or so off, lean. So what the mathematics will do is quick come up with a number and calculate it and feedback to the closed loop. By the way, it's this EGO correction that we're going to be looking at later for any auto tunes to work and also to verify our tune. So now what I've done is taken a big log, put it into scatter plots in Megalog Viewer HD, and come up with, on the left, I've got the target AFR where RPM is at the bottom, manifold air pressure is on the left, this happens to be a boosted motor, and our target AFR is represented in color out in the middle. I run about, I shoot for about 14 AFR, pretty much out of the power, and we're in the green area, or about 11 and a half at full throttle max power. On the right side, what you're seeing is what we actually got as an average AFR for this entire run. Notice how the colors are very similar in the left and right plot. That's what we're looking for with as little AFR correction as possible, or EGO correction. This motor happens to be running fully open loop, so that's pretty well tuned. Another way to look at this is going to the histogram view. Again, I've got RPM at the bottom, manifold air pressure up the left side, and out in the middle is the average EGO correction, Z-axis. Notice that all of these are under about 3% total correction. Actually, this one's running about 1.5% correction anywhere that the motor actually runs on course. Also notice up in the top right corner how I'm generally pulling fuel everywhere up top. The EGO corrections are pulling fuel. You do that just in case something goes wrong. If anything, the motor goes just a little bit rich. The last thing I want to point out is once you get a motor fully tuned, and remember I went to 14 AFR average. I was targeting 14 AFR through most of the low power area. Notice after we went ahead and ran out in the desert or whatever this motor does, the vast majority of driving is in this yellow box. 
it's in this yellow box is where you'd want to attempt running leaner to see, to see how lean you can actually run the motor, say 14.7, 14.8 in this area to get fuel economy. Uh, you spend so little time out of that box that it's not really worth being concerned about fuel economy. And that's where I give the motor what it wants to be smooth. I would like to thank my friends at TunerStudio.com. These are the developers of Mega Log Viewer HD, the software I use to analyze most of these motors. And please hit subscribe on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.